please put your hands together. From Allbirds, it's Joey Zwillinga. Good to have you, that's it. Hey, how are you? It's great to have you here. Thanks for having me. Good crowd. How are you today? Is this bigger than President Obama or smaller? <laughs> I've heard that you had quite uh, a lot of Bavarian uh, experience uh, over the last couple of days. That uh, you yeah, here. my voice is usually not yeah. this low enough. So what octave. happened? Uh, no, I just had fun to take in the culture. Oh, wow, okay. So you've been to Oktoberfest then? I've been, yes. And you're also wearing like Bavarian attire? Uh, a a wool-based lederhosen. Uh -huh. Oh, this is your shoes, right? Obviously, they you are. have to wear them they are. today. Yeah. So like the world's most comfortable shoes, as Dan Rem said, mostly like comfort you would associate with, you know, comfortable, nice to wear, but also like a little bit ugly. Mm -hmm. So how did you figure out to <laughs> actually build shoes they are comfortable and, you know, not ugly at the same time. I'd love to just get a sense. Before I answer that question, can I just see a raise of a uh, show of hands of who has heard of Allbirds before, um, before this? Oh, yeah, some. some people. Okay, that's actually yeah. pretty good. We just launched in <laughs> Germany in July. Um, and for those of you who ha didn't raise your hand, you can go to allbirds.eu and you can purchase a oh, pair. I like the small advertising and, break here. And uh, I have, yeah. uh, otherwise, otherwise, you know, I can't just show up. But just do this half, please, if I get bored, boring in the first half of the talk, and then that half, because sometimes we get like a security breach and we overrun the servers and we can't actually make your transaction. So first 10 minutes and then second 10 minutes, go and purchase the shoes, please. Thank you. Okay. So comfort. Yeah. We, uh, and so, ugliness. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I do think if when you, when you hear your dad's like, you know, I got this great comfortable pair of shoes, you think that it's gonna, he's going to walk out with a shoe with horns on it. And, and we thought that it's actually this interesting tension, but the, the whole business is built on this idea of tension where sustainability also feels like it, there's a tension. Either it's more expensive, it's lower quality, right. it's not as good. And, and we fundamentally believe that that is a tension that shouldn't exist. And that's a paradigm in consumers' minds that's just been embedded because of the way people have done. We actually fundamentally believe that using plastic from petroleum is just stupid. And we do use a little bit. So, and and I, I think everyone's going to see the entire industry start to talk about recycled polyester. And this is a great step in, in a positive direction. But that is not the answer. The answer is to make it a non-negotiable, to just, just forget that synthetics emerged over the last 50, 60 years. And, and before, wool was an extremely uh, broadly used material. And, and we, f we felt that if you, if you wipe, that, wipe the slate clean and you say, let's pretend petroleum didn't exist and let's not rely on chemical engineers only, let's actually look to the evolution of, of what nature has provided and use that as the non-negotiable. And then all of a sudden, you can let this beautiful material, the, the one I'm wearing is, is it's, we call it 17 micron, which is the, the width but of the fiber. But that's sugar, right? It's, it's cane sugar. So it's this, not is, petroleum. this is wool up here. Like merino wool? This is merino wool yeah. from, it's the finest, it's, it's like a cashmere sweater. This is a different material, which I'm happy to talk about, which we, we did use chemical engineering, but it's a, it's a renewable chemical process um, based on sugar cane. But the idea was get out of the way of this beautiful material, take the seams out, make it beautiful. And, and we coupled that with a business model where we, we, we eschewed any wholesale distribution. So this is just a direct to consumer uh, uh, distribution to, to people who are buying the shoes. Uh, which means that we have to rely on technology, which, is, um, which has been fantastic for us to reach directly, both marketing and selling directly to consumers. We also have our own stores. So mm -hmm. um, this is the way that we've gotten out of the way. And I think we're starting at the very early stage. So everyone who raised their hand is a very early adopter and is, is, is the hip crew uh, in this crowd. Those people uh, are, are seeing the very early wave of, of I think, breaking that tension not, not about mm -hmm. style and comfort, but really about the fact that, that you can't make an amazing product uh, and, and have, it, not, and, and have right. it also be sustainable. I think this is where we're... we're and let me, let me tell the story how I came to uh, learn about these shoes. I was living in Silicon Valley and I was like seeing all these engineers at Facebook, Google, walking around with these shoes, including I think Larry Page, 
uh, is one of the people who mm -hmm. bought these shoes. Also, Barack Obama, guys. Barack Obama also wore these shoes. So how did you, I mean, how did you create an attractive brand uh, out of this idea to, to build a sustainable, sustainable shoe? And I think maybe I'll, I'll, t I'll take a moment to answer that in a, in a, in a way that's relevant for the audience, because I think sometimes people wonder, what's a cobbler doing at a tech conference? Um, and so I think the thing that made us successful early, I'm, I'm quite convinced, is the clarity of message and the singularity that we offer to consumers. So when we launched the company, uh, Tim, my co-founder, and myself have totally different backgrounds. We've never been in fashion. He was a professional right. athlete. I was in biotech, making renewable chemicals to sell to industries like the footwear industry. And, and we realized that there was a giant opportunity to um, take what the footwear industry does, which is make 20 billion pairs of, of, foot, of, of shoes every year without really much thought towards the environment and use that as a platform to release something special and do it systematically so that it's a big opportunity for a long time to build a brand around that. And we, yet we started with something so simple. We had one shoe. In March of 2016, we launched the Wool Runner, which is a sneaker version of this, a, a low top. And you launched it out of the kitchen, <clears throat> right? We launched it out of my, yeah, my mother-in-law's apartment. And, and, uh, and we, we did, yeah. So, so we launched that and we sold one shoe for 14 months. <laughs> and what was so, like, you can't miss what our values are. And I think people started, Famous people started adopting it. A lot of people in, in, in San Francisco. But how did, you, how did you got to wear them? Did you send them a pair of shoes, like no, totally they, desperate? They would buy them. We, okay. didn't, we didn't do any paid marketing for the first, basically the first year that we existed. And, and the, I think the authenticity that's shown through the clarity of message by not trying to do too much, saying no to the, the 99 things and saying yes to the one thing was, was what made this thing stand out, I think, really comprehensively. Leonardo DiCaprio found this himself and okay. and, and he's and an investor after in we guys, found that right? out we approached and we started talking about um working okay. together and he, he he works with the brand and as he well. said well leonardo we have some great shoes here you he might found them and he loved them and i think the, the idea is that the authenticity of what we stand for from a values perspective can is is um unequivocal and people recognize it and then they they like the product and they align with the values so then they stay with the brand it's, it's kind of that. They don't buy it generally. Mm -hmm. I don't think people buy it as much for sustainability. At the point of sale when they're giving us money, they're doing it because the product is fantastic. They then stay loyal to the brand, I think, afterwards because, because they align with the values of the company and they understand that we can make a positive impact in the world and also make money, and people mm -hmm. would like to reward us for that. Okay. I don't think there's any negative feeling about, about the fact so, that we're so doing well and doing good. So you would say people don't buy sustainable products per se, they buy better products then? I, or? I think generally, for, for our category, it's fashion and comfort, price, service, on down the list, maybe number 12 is sustainability. At the time that they're putting money out, I think people are interested in trying our brand now more than ever because they believe in what we believe in. And so I do think over time, this is changing. Mm -hmm. I think particularly our younger demographic, um, we call them millennials and Gen Z, uh, would, would, are, are gravitating much more to brands that they feel they align with their value system. And that is where I think now we're at the, we're at the front end of a multi-decade trend where brands do have to stand for something more than just making money. And if they don't, mm -hmm. there's, no real, there's no real way they're gonna actually thrive and, and survive on the, on the global stage. Mm -hmm. I think that is what the world is asking for. Uh, I, think, I think some people describe capitalism as under attack, which I totally disagree with. I just think consumers are asking companies to do more than just make money for their shareholders. And we provide uh, a really clear path to doing that, even in the way we've structured our organization. We're chartered as a public benefit corporation, which in the U.S. allows us to have legal liability protection so that we can protect the environment. Mm -hmm. And our, our charter says environmental conservation is our stakeholder, as well as our fiduciary responsibility to shareholders. And that is what I believe consumers are asking for. But you also share your IP with other companies, right? Like the IP around how you do like the whole shoe, like the design and the material that you are using. I've, I've heard that you are very open 
about sharing this kind yeah, of Yeah, I mean, look, we're, climate change is not, I'm not going to sit here and say we're solving climate change. We got, it has to be a collective effort. It's got to be, as was discussed yesterday um, mm -hmm. with the president, it's got to be private sector, it's got to be NGOs, it's got to be government organization and regulation. Everything needs to come together, but I think the way that we, be we believe we can make a big impact. So we went down to Brazil and we identified that the largest component used in the sneaker industry is, is the foam midsole. It's called the EVA. What? The foam midsole. Okay. The foam on the bottom. And it's, it's from petroleum or natural gas usually. And we went down, uh, we mocked up a, a cover page of the Wall Street Journal to show them what the magic we were going to create together was. That was just a little business development trick. And we said, let's come together and let's make a, a using the waste stream of sugarcane production, and Brazil is the largest sugarcane producer in the world. Let's use the waste stream of that and take it through a number of, of green chemical steps and turn it into this foam. And we did so, and by the end of the process, uh, we realized that it was, it was carbon negative, meaning that when carbon dioxide comes out of tailpipes in Brazil, sugarcane sucks that into and produces sugar as a result with just some photons from the sun and some water from, from, from rainfall. And we take that and harness the waste stream of that to make this. So it's better for the planet that we are making the, the midsole versus having not made it at all. So it's closer to a tree than it is to your perception of a, of a typical consumer product. And we, we found a way to do that with them. We, they, that company, the, com the green chemical company in Brazil invested millions of dollars to make it happen into their facility down in southern Brazil. And we said, <clears throat> let's let the entire industry use this. Mm -hmm. Let's do it so that the volume goes down and we get a better price. And let's do it because it's the right thing to do for the world. So there's this balance mm -hmm. of altruism and pragmatism. And now over 100 companies are sampling this. And I'd expect you guys to see lots of shoe brands and other brands start to use this material soon. But I also think that the whole discussion. Thank you. <clears throat> but, I guess, but I guess the whole discussion around climate change, the global climate strike, and everything else that's happening and that's discussing like in, in politics and at the UN Climate Summit is actually helping your sales as well, I guess, right? So it's a perfect situation to come up with a sustainable brand and you know the zeitgeist actually, you know it's it's a it's a good timing. I, th I thought for the you. president yesterday well, said it the best. It's it's that politicians are sometimes followers, not leaders. And if there's not action from consumers, activists, people like Greta, then they could just sit there and protect the status quo because that's where they're in the U.S. at least their campaign finance comes from. And and in the in the private sector, we haven't. I think now an obligation, but we certainly have an opportunity in the private sector to be a leader and to get rewarded for that leadership. And so I think we can, a company like Allbirds, we believe we have an opportunity to be leaders in showing what we believe is, is the right way to do things. We use minimal carbon intensity materials, so we make the lowest carbon footprint shoe we possibly can, no pun intended, and then we, we offset the rest of it so that we're 100% carbon neutral through our entire supply chain. And if everybody did that, the entire private sector did that, we wouldn't have climate change as an issue. So we fundamentally believe that if, if we start Fair showing enough. the way, if we can be leaders and show others how to do this and they start copying mm -hmm. us, and we have plenty of copies, so yeah. far mostly, Amazon copied you, right? mostly the, the design, not our sustainable practices, that is, that, is a, that is a way that we can lead. And if we're rewarded for that financially, I don't have a problem with that, and I don't think our consumers or our customers will either. So mm -hmm. I think it's, I do think it's time for it's time for the private sector to step up big time. I think those companies who do will be handsomely rewarded. Cool. <clears throat> and I think that brings me to to the question many entrepreneurs in the audience ask themselves. Actually, I think everybody wants to do something better you know, to be sustainable, to be carbon neutral. But for many people, th they think it's a complicated thing. It, it's like it costs you money, it costs you profit. Uh, you have to turn around the whole organization. So, so can you probably share some best practices that you learned about how to address this without losing profit sure. or, you know, revenue? Sure. I, I think the, uh, I'll say, a more general thing and then a specific action we've taken. I think first and foremost, 
It's a mindset shift. If you sat here and asked me the question, how do you make the quality of your shoe a priority? It's, it's pretty obvious, right? Like the quality of the shoe needs to be good, otherwise no one's gonna buy it. So we put a huge amount of focus on making a quality product. We do the same thing for sustainability. If, if we believe that customers are gonna reward us and it's the thing that we absolutely need to do as a non-negotiable, we have to make that investment. And it's not that complicated when you get into it. And, and particularly when you're, when you're a small company, getting 90% of the way there versus trying to squeeze out the last 10% is pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. and, you, and just add a little conservatism and you're there. So I, I, don't, I don't buy the premise of the question. I think that if people invested in doing the right thing authentically in the same way that they invested in the quality of their product, mm -hmm. you're gonna be fine. Specifically though, I think reshaping and rethinking how you structure your company is quite important. So typically in a, in a big corporation, I, I, as when I was selling uh, in my previous role, I was an executive selling renewable chemicals made from algae that we use biotech okay. to make. And they were all carbon neutral. And when I would go to these companies, uh, I would typically uh, meet people from different parts of the organization, but often there was a sustainability person there. And they'd be so excited, they're talking about sustainability to, to their consumers. And then I'd get kicked down to the sourcing person, they'd be like, you know what, can you just do what we do now and do it cheaper? And, and that was where the conversation devolved, and I had the realization that consumers wanted something, the technology existed, and brands were actually in the way. So let's build a brand that did something special and allowed to unlock all that value that consumers are asking for. But what I also realized is that CSR, corporate social responsibility, that group in a, in a company mm -hmm. is like an appendage right. on the body of a company. Right. Whereas if you put what you're- It's like diversity or like any other diversity officer, right. chief diversity officer. It, typically it's a side, a side right. initiative. Yeah. Whereas what we've done is we've put sustainability within our product team. And we've said it has to pass the same gates as if it were, we were discussing cost or quality or design. So it's just one of those four areas where we have to check the box on the development process. Mm -hmm. And so if you rethink, our, our purpose is to, is to make an impact and make a dent again on the fight for climate change, to prevent climate change. If, if whatever your impact is, I just urge people to rethink how you put and how you organize your company and don't do a CSR thing because that's what good, thoughtful, modern companies do. Put it into the process of your business such that the impact is a natural outcome of that mm -hmm. process. And mm -hmm. I think we've done, we've done a good job of doing that intentionally quite early. Uh, we, one of our first executives was called the VP of Innovation and Sustainability. That's his title. Okay. And that is embedded deeply in that process. Okay. So I think that's a, that's a big, cool. a big change, yeah. So you now have shoes, yeah. <laughs> so you now have shoes, you also have socks, right? Yeah. Is this the socks you're wearing yep. there? Yeah. Okay. Nice. So what's next? Um, yeah, so I think... Pajamas. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. Um, we're we're kind of listening to the consumer now a lot as well. Uh, we just launched in, in Europe and Germany's uh, gone fantastically for us. We have a, a store opening in Berlin in about 10 days. Uh, and one of the things that we have, have gleaned from our customers that they, they don't, we've never presented ourselves as a shoe company and certainly not a wool company. We've presented ourselves as a company who can systematically unearth the beauty from nature to make something special. And, and we happen to make shoes uh, up, to, up until recently. And so we thought, let's take, we, we have a eucalyptus fiber that we refer to as our tree product line. We have a wool, uh, wool product line that's called Merino. So we introduced a material called Trino, which is tree and Merino. And we obviously paid someone a lot of money to make up that name. Um, <laughs> and and uh, so Trino is a natural extension where we've taken, we've taken our uh, material innovations and we've put them into a form factor that s still has the same delightful feel when you put it on your body, has a great carbon impact uh, on the planet, and we've also offset that. And, and it's, something that, uh, it's something that our customers have asked for. And so we've, we've, launched, we've launched Trino, 
particularly. It happens to Sounds be in the like form Katrina, of a sock. Though, to me. Katrina, yeah. maybe. <laughs> um, but we uh, we launched the socks, and and that's that's really a first a first uh, garment within apparel. And I think Trino has a lot of really interesting uh, things to do and outside of shoes. So more to come on that. But Great. Thanks for your time. Thank Thanks you Thanks for much. being Thanks here for with us and share your vision Thank around you sustainability shoes. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.